And I would like to say a warm welcome to all our participants at this August occasion in February to this virtual leadership training 2023. I welcome you, my CVP and president, with your team. I also welcome the CVP Emeritus, our amiable eminent speakers chairpersons and secretaries of branches, council members. I'd like to say a big welcome. Today, we're having a leadership training organized by FIDA Nigeria. And the topics for today are red flags in, in organizational effectiveness, tips on surmounting them, and Treating the FIDA organization as an enterprise, the role of a leader. Our speakers certainly will do justice to this topic. We'd like to thank FIDA Nigeria, ably led by our country vice president, Mrs. Susanna, Mrs. Amina Susanna Abadje, for putting this training together at this moment in time. We would recall that we had a leadership training and a retreat at Abuja that was last year from 24th of March to the 26th of March. And um, at the end of that meeting, at the end of that training, we were all enjoined to step down such training. It was a directive from the country vice president. And today, the essence of today's training, which is done virtually, is to train and retrain for capacity building and to make our branches better for it. We'll say thank you, our country vice president and your team. We we'll pray that you have more grace to do more so that our branches could get better by the day. I enjoin all participants to sit back, listen attentively, because we have a lot to learn from these notable speakers. Thank you very much. My name is Christiana Onyabuto Adejumo, the National Publicity Secretary. Welcome on board. At this moment, I'd like to invite our country vice president and president of FIDA Nigeria, Mrs. Amina Susanna Baje, to give us her address. 
CBP Ma, thank you very much. So good afternoon, um, Christy, our able um, national PRO. Good afternoon, FIDA members. Um, I wish, I hope our day is all going on well. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of us to this leadership training organized to sharpen our leadership skills as we pilot the affairs of FIDA Nigeria at all levels. It may be recalled that in me, which has helped us to give clear direction and purposeful leadership to our organization, FIDA Nigeria. In order to sustain the tempo, continuous training and retraining is required. Hence, this training with carefully selected topics, namely have been crafted. Red flags in organizational effectiveness, tips on surmounting them, treating the feeder organization as an enterprise, the role of a leader. Let me also quickly state that we have carefully selected very eminently qualified and experienced feeders by virtue of their trainings and exposures to treat the above topics. We have with us um, to treat one of the topics is our big sister, our mentor, and an elder, someone who has been uh, a, a past yeah. branch chairperson of Bida Abuja and went on to become um, a regional vice president, Mrs. Rose Obegeli Mosu. And the second speaker is our dear sister, uh, also our mentor, our leader, who was one time the chairperson of FIDA Lagos. She went on to become the national secretary and um, she's now a lecturer. Um, our sister, Chigozri Ojiaka, PhD. I wish to deeply appreciate them for accepting to share with us from the reservoir of their knowledge and experience. As leaders of our organization, we are determined to inject into the leadership of our organization international best practices to achieve maximally for the benefit of our organization and the beneficiaries under our mandate. My dear Fidans, let me also state that without a continuous training, our organization at both levels will not be able to stand strong amongst others to attract collaborative partnership and networking atten attentions, both locally and internationally. Consequently, I urge us all to take this training very seriously by paying very rapt attention to our resource persons and at the end, ask appropriate questions to gain clarity on gray areas. At the risk of being preemptive of our speakers, let me state that as leaders, we must all work hard to make our organization the envy of all. There are some red flags that, I, that FIDA Nigeria has observed particularly from our branches, namely needless internal strife, both amongst the leaders and members, lack of teamwork and synergy, taking over another officer's role, sectionalism through tribalism and religion, autocracy by leaders, lack of knowledge of roles and not rising up to function effectively, lack of proper reporting as and when due, hoarding information from each other, bad communication between officers and members, rudeness, disrespect, and use of abusive languages, lack of proper etiquette at branch meetings, improper use of branch platforms, as some branch platforms are used for merely mobilization for member celebrations and sell selling of goods and so on and so forth. Poor case management, bad public relations, projecting only key officers rather than the brand FIDA Nigeria. Lack of prior approvals for monies and improper liquidation after expenses. Lack of branch audited accounts, loans to the branch by individuals. <clears throat> Lack of proper records and documentation, storage of branch information, non-handover of branch properties and records. Let me state that once we are able to deal with the above red flags, our branches will function properly. Again, if we must all achieve our target, we must treat our organization as an enterprise where satisfaction of customers, our beneficiaries, and profit 
and profit gain for the sustainability of the organization are key areas of focus. As leaders, the gains of our leadership must be seen in the lives of our members. It was General Omar Bradley who said, the greatness of a leader is measured by the achievements of the lead. This is the ultimate test for his effectiveness. It is my hope and prayer that our leadership skills should increase the effectiveness of our organization. Once again, I welcome you all to this very historic learning session. I wish us all a very happy deliberation. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Over to you, National uh, PRO, Christy. Over to you, thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful welcome address, my amiable CVP. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, the speakers for the moment. I'll take the first who is going to speak, and that is Chigoziri Ojaka, PhD. Um, I'll run through very quickly. Um, Chigoziri Ojaka, PhD, is an attorney, a law teacher, and a renowned development strategist and gender activist. She studied law at the University of Nigeria and was called to bar in 1992. After LLM from the University of Lagos, she bagged a PhD in law with a specialty in environmental law and energy law. She is a law teacher at Imo State University, Oweri, and the coordinator of clinic legal education of the law faculty clinical legal education of the law faculty. She is a trainer and legal consultant of Fortune Gates Consulting Limited, Fortune Gates Consulting United Kingdom, a regular media commentator and panelist on national issues and a consultant on gender and child, child rights, good governance, social justice, environmental law and international human rights law. She is passionate about the plight of women and children in Africa. In Africa, Chigo, as she is called by her friends, was the chairperson of International Federation of Women Lawyers Lagos State Branch from 2008 to 2010, where she pioneered groundbreaking advocacy projects. She was the National Secretary of FIDE Nigeria from 2011 to 2014. Chigozeri has published more than 27 scholarly articles and books, book and book chapters in reputable academic journals. She is a committed Catholic and married to Dr. Kasmir Ojiaka. Our second speaker for today is Mama Rosaline Obiagele Umosu. Mama was called to the Nigerian bar in July 1981, and after obtaining her LLB from Queen Mary College, University of London in 1980, she obtained a diploma international, she obtained a diploma in international arbitration from the Chartered Institute of Arbit Arbitrators, UK. She is a fellow and uh, an accredited mediator of, of Center for Effective Dispute Resolution. She is a notary public of Nigeria and has worked with both the Ministry of Justice and Corporate Affairs Commission. She is an experienced ADR practitioner and has presided over many arbitration and mediation disputes. She is a fellow and also a member of GAME and a member of um, Family Peace Facilitators Network. She recently acquired certification in um, Institute of Chartered Mediation and Conciliation and ODR as an online dispute resolution practitioner and also certification in family mediation from Mediation Training Institute under the auspices of Family Peace Facilitators Network. She is a neutral Abuja multi-door courthouse 
Neutral and Board Member Dispute Resolution Center of Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Member ADR Center, Lagos Chamber of Commerce, Neutral Alternative Dispute Resolution Center of the Federal High Court, Member International Chamber of Commerce, Nigeria. She is a faculty member in the Dispute Resolution Center of Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry, a trainer of arbitration in the International Center of Arbitration and Mediation Abuja, also a tutor in both arbitration and mediation courses in Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, UK, and Institute of Construction Industry Arbitrators. She is currently the first vice chair of Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, UK, Nigeria branch, Abuja chapter. Would like to say a warm welcome to our speakers. Um, we're going down straight to the first topic. And the first topic is going to be taken by Chigozere Ojaka, PhD. The topic is red flags in organizational effectiveness, tips on surmounting them. Um, Dr. Mrs. You have the floor. Happy to be here to make this short presentation. Um, my special regards goes to the CVP, Amina Abache, the DCVP, the National Secretary, PRO, and other national schools. I will just go straight to look at red flags in organizational effectiveness, tips on surmounting them. Um, by way of introduction, organizational leadership determines the success or effectiveness or otherwise of every organization or entity. And we know that in Nigeria, in Nigeria, leadership failure has been a great challenge in both political and organizational positions. And this is what has made it possible and critical for us to keep grooming and building the capacity of people who intend to be leaders in the future as a way of raising competent leaders. We sincerely apologize for the hitch in the um, network. If uh, we can't reach Dr. Chikoziri right now, I um, would like to take Mama Wosu, Mama Rosu Wosu to take her topic. Mama Wosu, I don't know if you're ready for us to take the second topic, which is treating the feeder organization as an enterprise, the role yes. of a leader. Yes, I am. Thank you, Ma. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My special um, thanks to Madam CVP, our amiable CVP and her team, a hard working team. I appreciate this opportunity to share my thoughts on this topic that I think is a very good one. I sent it, okay, um, one who knows the way, that is somebody who is knowledgeable, who is skillful and has something to show for it. Then goes the way. That means leadership by example, a role model, and then shows the way mentoring people, coaching them to become future leaders. Then we have another quotation, the capacity to rally men and women to a common purpose and the character which inspires confidence. This is very, very important. When we are talking about role model, you have to show it in your leadership as one of your leadership skills that you have the character that you know, makes people to trust you and be willing to follow you. Then the last one talks about True leadership lies in guiding others to success. That is also part of the first one that I mentioned, that is shows the way. Then this next page, leadership is a privilege. This one, I want us to really, really pay attention to this because a lot of us take things for granted. It is a privilege and not a right. And the leader must be passionate and humble at the same time. When you have made a leader, it's a, you see it as a privilege. You don't take it for granted. And 
in, 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 in the lighter mood, this is not an emulacal. properly. Leadership is a privilege and you don't take anything for granted. You must be humble when you are a leader. You are just first amongst equals, you know, and you should treat your members with respect. Don't behave as if you know it all and that you're superior to them because you are not. Honestly, you're not superior to them. You are just first among equals. And then leaders influence, direct, and inspire others to perform specific tasks. Best leaders drive their teams with passion. For you to drive somebody with passion and enthusiasm, you must have that passion yourself for what you are doing and believe in what you're doing. And then motivation to reach the desired goals of their organization. In this case, we're talking about FIDA. Because different types of uh, leadership styles. And the first one is the autocratic one, completely authoritarian. This is not a popular, leadership style at all, leadership style. And I said, it's a negative one. Most people don't like it, including me, because you can sum it up by saying, do as I say, you know, like a command. You are commanding people that are with you, just telling them to do as, as you say. Direction comes from just the leader who does almost everything, who alone determines strategy, determines the policies, procedures, and direction. The followers may feel micromanaged because they're just treat, treating them as if they're objects, not listening to them, not taking their ideas into consideration, and just doing everything as if she knows everything. This is not acceptable at all, and it's not something that can be encouraged, definitely not in FIDA. Here, the, the team members, they feel incapacitated, and they're completely dependent on the leader. And because of that, they're incapable of taking decisions. That is not good enough. Then the second one is the democratic leadership style. This is for me the most pop, no, this is the most popular one. And for me, the most apt for feedance. It is participative in nature. Even though the leader ultimately takes the final decision, other members of the team contribute to decision-making. So they feel involved. They feel that they're part of the decision-making. And this style encourages creativity and positive contribution to success of the organization by all parties. Nobody knows it all. So if you're a leader, it behoves on you to take people along the line, you know, take them with you, talk with them, get their ideas. And we'll, before you know it, you'll be able to get some very good ideas from even those that are your subordinates, because we all come with different, from different backgrounds, with different capacities and all that. So you'll be able to benefit. Democratic leaders are easily approachable. This style heightens morale of followers because they feel involved. They feel the ownership. So they are ready to give in their best. Then the next one is what we call the laissez faire leadership style. Here, the leader empowers the followers and gives them a lot of freedom. That's why we call it laissez faire. Leaves decision-making to them while staying available to provide guidance when necessary. Here, the leader is excellent at delegating. We'll talk about that later. And this instills, instills confidence in the theme. But then it's a, it's a bit too free, you know, and it may not work in some certain situation. Then we have what we call the transformational leader. This is, by the way, it's like a new concept that is just coming on. You know, the leader inspires and motivates the workforce without micromanaging them. That he, tr the tr he trusts their trained employees or team members to take authority over decisions in their jobs. It's a new management style that is designed to give employees more room for creativity. Now we are onto qualities of good leader, good and effective leader. I sort of rearranged this one, you know, when I was going through my uh, presentation, I decided to make one or two changes, so please bear with me. Now, now, when I rearranged it, I put in the first one for me is passion. 
as a leader, you must be passionate about your work. If you're not passionate, you won't be able to, you know, really, really get out of serious situations when you meet difficulties. But when you're passionate, it's possible for you to persevere in the, whatever it is you believe in. And most importantly, to carry your team members along. When you're passionate, you cannot hide it. The passion comes through in your speech, in the way you behave, and in the way you work. The passion, other people have this you know, way of cashing into the passion that you're exhibiting and then flowing with you. So for me, passion is the first one here. Then we talk about integrity. We all know what integrity is. Integrity is doing the right things and trying to make the right decisions. You know, when you have integrity, you are also accountable. Accountable in the sense that you take responsibility for the actions of your team. You know, you are the leader. So if they, the ball stops at your table, if the team does well, all of you will take the benefits. And if it doesn't do well, the leader will take the blame. That is the way it works. So if you have integrity, you do things right, you give good examples, you do what we call leadership by example, we get to it when we get to the rules of our leaders. Then the next one I have here, apart from passion, the next one is integrity. Then I talked about, please, just one second. Okay, the next one for me is effective, be an effective communicator. Be an effective communicator and being willing to listen to other people. It's very, very important quality for a leader. You have to be effective in the way you communicate, both written and oral communication, very, very important because it's not only FIDA members that you'll be dealing with, you'll be dealing with outsiders. We'll be dealing with our donors. We'll be dealing with all those that we deal with, the people that benefit from our services and all that. So you have to be in a position to communicate very, very well. Very important. If you don't have that skill, please go and learn it. It's never too late. You have to know how to write properly and how to speak well. And then you have to have an open door policy. What do I mean by open door policy? You must be accessible to your members at any time, accessible to your members, to your team members, your ESCO members, especially, and to members, freedom members generally. You know, have to have an open door policy. People should feel comfortable enough to come to you to discuss any issue that is bothering them or share ideas of things you can do to make it better. So then also, I, I also noted that tell members, discuss your plans with members. We have ESCO, ESCO platform, you know, in all branches, the chairperson and the ESCO members should be in a platform where they discuss issues that are coming up, discuss their plans and everything, and then have physical meetings, maybe once in a month, just before the general meeting, to discuss, put their plan, your plans before the meeting and get their input, their buy-in. Let them share their thoughts. You'll be surprised that some people have more ideas of certain things you want to do, even more than you do. You know, even though you are the leader, nobody knows it all. So you need to carry your members along, let them feel some kind of ownership, you know, that they're part of the team, and then they'll be able to give you your best, that will enable you to be very, very effective and result-oriented in whatever you're doing. Then the next one here, do not be divisive. That is a problem that we have in FIDA. Unfortunately, some leaders, I don't know what it is all about, they have this problem of when they have an ESCO, instead of working with the entire ESCO, they will choose some people to work with. Being very, very uh, divisive is not a good thing at all because you now cause problems for yourself and for the entire FIDA family. Now, when you're the, uh, divisive, it means you choose maybe one or two people you prefer to work with and then let all the others feel as if they're not part of the team. That is not good at all. It's part of being an effective communicator and listening to your members. Then the next thing I picked out of all this, there are many of them, but I'm just highlighting the ones that I think we need to take particular note of. The next one is being decisive. You know, as a leader, sometimes you have some difficult decisions to make, but then as a leader, you just have to make them. Whether they are difficult or tough decisions, you have to make them when they are necessary. So as a leader, you must have that quality of being in a position to make a decision when necessary. 
Then the next one I talked about is being a good team player. You know, when you have an ESCO with you, you have to know how to carry everybody along. And then do not, I mentioned this earlier, do not isolate anyone or cause division. A leader is supposed to bring people together and not to divide them. You cannot be the one causing the trouble when you are supposed to be the one solving the problem. Then the next one is uh, amongst the quality. There are so many of them here. There are some that I've not even mentioned, like being a critical thinker, being you know persevering. I've already built it in somewhere else and all that. When you are free, I mean, when we are done, you can go through them and then pick all the ones that you enjoy. And then being self-aware, that is very, very important. If you're self-aware, it means you know your own capacity, you know what you can do, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, and you, then you now take advantage of the people around you to make up for all those uh, low points so that you can be effective. Then the last one I picked here is continue to improve yourself. There's no end to learning. As a leader, you are supposed to almost input, but I, we know it's impossible. Know it all. Because you're going to be in a position where you have to guide your members. So if you don't know, what are you going to tell them? It says that there's a, a cliche that you cannot give what you don't have. If you don't have the knowledge, you cannot pass it to anybody. So you have to continually continue to improve yourself. Seek opportunities for training if you have them. Go on the internet. The internet is filled up. It's just that you have to be wise enough to know how to sift the truth from the ones that are not so truthful, you know, not so beneficial. But keep on improving yourself so that you'll be somebody of value who can also give that value to your members. Okay, this is it for, um, okay, I mentioned uh, humble and seek feedback and ways to improve. That is part of being a good communicator. If you're a good communicator, you will seek feedbacks from your members. What is it that we didn't do so right? What is it that you want us to change next time? You know, constructive criticisms from them that will help you to improve the next time you uh, uh, go on maybe some advocacy visit or whatever it is program you're handling, you do it better each time you're supposed to get better at what you do. Then I also mentioned you have to have what we call people skills and be emotionally intelligent. Emotional intelligence is something that came on board some few years ago. It just means that you know your own behavior, you know, you know how you behave, how you feel, you can interpret it and then you can also interpret people's feelings and know how to deal with them and what to tell them at any particular time, the time to empathize, the time to do whatever it is you need to do with them. You can feel their emotions and then you'll be able to deal with them appropriately. Then having people's skills is just knowing how to treat people, how to interact with them, being courteous and all that, you know, how to deal with people generally. And I mentioned here that the list is not exhaustive and indeed it is not exhaustive. There are so many other things that can enhance the quality of a leader and make the leader a good and effective leader. Talking about the leadership roles, this one also is not exhaustive. I just mentioned the ones that I thought we should talk about, you know, that we should lay emphasis on. The first one, the current leader in FIDA should understand what FIDA is all about. It's all, all about knowledge. If you don't know it, how are you going to lead others? So you have to be knowledgeable and it is your duty as a leader to make sure that you acquire that knowledge. You should know what FIDA is all about, understand the structure of FIDA, the mission of FIDA, the vision, the functions, the core values, and even the strategic plan for 2021 to 2026, which we are following right now. You have to be very on top of your game, very, very knowledgeable and skillful so that you will be in a position. You position yourself to be a leader. You don't get into leadership by asking to them. And perchance you do. It's your business and your duty, you know, to enhance your knowledge, to empower yourself by learning those things that either though you did not have opportunity. But then most of us don't just jump into leadership roles. Most of the time you would have understudied somebody, you would have worked under somebody, maybe as a vice, as a secretary, whatever it is, all those are learning opportunities. At that time, you play your part and make sure that you learn as much as possible so that when 
the cap is now on your head when you now eventually become a chairperson or a team lead, like uh, you are heading a committee, you would have known what is expected of you and be able to meet that expectation. The next one, this leadership by example, I merged it with role models. So the next one I'm going to talk about here is being a good planner and organizer. You have to know how to organize and plan things. That's one of the things that uh, the leaders in our business and enterprises do very, very well. They are very good planners and they can handle a lot of, you know, uh, things that they need to do that enables them to make the profit for their company. So it's something that we in FIDA should learn how to become good planners and organizers, organizers of events, of programs. And in fact, for, for uh, chairpersons, after the inauguration of uh, that, the new ESCO, the first thing that I think a chairperson should do is to try to conduct an orientation program training for the members. You will be surprised that some people don't even know what is if they, what they are supposed to be doing with their offices. So that's an opportunity for them to learn what they are supposed to do in their different offices and also the expectations of people over them. What is it that you are expected to do as a secretary? What are you supposed to do as a, a treasurer and all that? They may have vague ideas, but an orientation seminar or something will really, really help them, you know, and enhance their knowledge and also know what people expect from them. Delegator. Delegator, the chairperson does not know it all. And in fact, even if she does, she must learn how to delegate. That's a very good uh, attribute of a good leader. You learn how to delegate. You must delegate responsibilities to the executive members. By the way, the executive members, they compete for positions. The secretary should know what a secretary is supposed to do in an organization. You know, the treasurer should know her own duties and all that. So you allow them to do their work. And also, when you have some other special programs that you want to do, you should be able to know who your members are. You should be able to know their strengths and weaknesses and also know who has the requisite skills that are required for any particular assignment. So when you're delegating, you're delegating to the right person who can achieve exactly, who can help you to achieve exactly what you need to do. In fact, there's a quotation here from a former American president. Uh, if I see it, I'll mention it. He just says that a good leader is not necessarily the one that does all the work, but is the person that knows how to delegate work to people who can now achieve what he wants to achieve. So that is a very, from Ronald Reagan, former president of the US, he talked about you know, delegation, the importance of delegation. It's a very, very important role of a leader. You can't do it all, you don't know it all. And so you have to delegate and use the services of other people. Then let's move to the next one. She should know how to encourage her team, inspire them to action and help them realize their potentials. A motivator helps people to grow, inspires, inspires you by encouraging you to do things and giving you the opportunity to do it. To also another way to motivate, if it's in a workplace, in a business uh, you know, environment or um, enterprise where their main object is to make profit, they have different ways that they motivate their, their workers like paying extra salary the 13th month. Some of you know about it, those that are in government. There's something called the 13th month that companies pay. And then some even give a percentage of a certain achievement you have made. They pay you extra money. They give you, you know, opportunities for training and all that. But in FIDA, we don't have the opportunity to pay money and all that. What we can do is to send people on trainings, send them for meetings, you know, when you have, when you are invited, Constantly, we get invitations from meetings. Don't make it your business to attend all the meetings. Give other people opportunity to attend meetings because in the process, they, they will learn. They will learn and, you know, start getting better and preparing them. So it's a way of preparing them for future leadership positions. And also, another way to motivate people is to acknowledge when they do things well. Give them credit for the process. You know, if they do something and they achieve very well, give them open credit in front of everybody, not secretly. 
acknowledge what they have done and thank them. Learn to say thank you to people. It won't remove anything from you. Don't be greedy and take all the benefits or take all the uh, pluses. When you succeed, you want to be the only one to be recognized. No, please motivate your members by acknowledging them when they, when they succeed. Very, very important. And when they don't do so well, you don't have to rebuke them publicly. You can call them by the side and give them a moderate feedback. Explain to them what it is that they didn't do so well and then give them you know, opportunity maybe to explain why they didn't do it so well. And at the end of it all, explain to them where, how they can do it better next time. Uh -huh. Now we can talk about the team builder. She should build a formidable team. In fact, as a matter of fact, as a feeder chairperson, you already have a team. You have your ESCO members, they are your team. You know, and then the heads of the different committees in your branch. So you already have a team, but it's for you to make them formidable by building them up and being a good team player yourself. Being a good team player means that you give other people opportunity to impact on the team. It's not only you talking all the time and expecting everybody to sit down and be listening as if they're, uh, you know, as if they're, how will I even put it? I don't even know the correct word to use for it. But being a team builder and a team player means you take part in the team activities just like every other person. Yes, most of the time you'll be leading, but you don't have to lead all the time. You know, when you have somebody that has something to offer in that team, and maybe you're talking about one topic that needs to be exhaustively discussed, you can step down, move back a bit, and step back a bit and allow others to lead in the discussion if they're more knowledgeable than you in that particular aspect. It doesn't reduce your status. It doesn't take anything away from you. It just shows that you're a good team player. And at the end of it, or what you want to achieve is success, isn't it? So whether you are always the one leading or not, it's not very, very important at this stage, especially when you're you know, talking about projects and the way you want to execute them and what you need to do in order to achieve your purpose. Then I talked about, I added something that is not here. Let me just quickly talk about it. Being a visionary. The visionary provides direction to members and you know, generates enthusiasm of members. The visionary thinks strategically and helps members in different aspects, different ways and in mobilizing them, in explaining things to them, and carrying them along, generating enthusiasm. And before you can do that, you too must be passionate and enthusiastic about what you do. I've talked about passion before. It's a prerequisite for all these things to work properly. So you become a visionary, you provide direction, you tell them this is the way to go. You know, it's part of the definition of a leader where he says the person that knows the way, the person that leads the way and all that and carries other people along. So you show them the way and they will gladly follow you if they are convinced that what you're doing is right. And then we now have the coach. The coach is somebody who helps members to excel and achieve their potentials. He looks for opportunities for herself and other members to improve on what they're doing. And this is where nomination is also important here. I encourage your members to improve themselves, maybe through education, through attending meetings and nominating them to attend meetings and trainings. Sometimes we have opportunities for trainings and then you nominate people. Don't make it a point that you'll be the only one attending everything. It's not right. And um, you can't succeed much if you are very, very selfish. You cannot be a selfish person. As a leader, you have to be selfless and think about building other people. But that's one of your main functions to build future leaders. Because after you, there must be continuation. You cannot cross the bridge and break it. No, there has to be opportunities for other people to grow. And it is your business to help them to grow. And that's where coaching comes in, coaching and mentoring. You, know, you coach them, you mentor them, and groom them for the future. Then the last but not the least that I have here in my list is the role model. Very, very, very important. A feeder chairperson or team lead has to do things right, exhibit good leadership traits, inspire others by setting good example. 
This you can match this one. We made it. We made it with leadership by example. Your character for you to be a role model, you have to have good character. You have to have good values, things that people will want to emulate. In fact, it touches everything you do as a leader. Being a role model, a feeder role model, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, it speaks volume. You should be aware that you are a role model and make sure that you fit into that position. Very, very important. Being a role model and behaving well will help your members, it will help you to gain trust, respect, and admiration from your members so that they willingly want to emulate you. They want to follow you. We sometimes we hear people saying, when they admire somebody, they say, when I grow up, I want to be like you. Very, very good. It's a very, very positive thing, you know, for somebody who is a leader to see people following you. Not that you're walking alone and when you look back, you do not see anybody. That's not good at all. So being a role model, that is one of your responsibilities as a leader in FIDA. You make sure you behave in such a way that people will want to emulate you and people will want to follow you. Leaders facilitate organizational success by engendering trust and loyalty, which enables the leader to drive and motivate her team to achieve goals of the organization. Effective leadership creates a good and collaborative working environment, enables teams to feel valued and fosters a sense of ownership in their work. This encourages them to put in their best. So that is good leadership leads to success, sustainability, development, and growth of the group and the organization. This one, are the, you know, this is the result. The first three I've read talks about where there's good leadership. The last one is talking about bad leadership. Bad leadership, on the other hand, leads to a toxic working environment and attitudes, toxic attitudes. If it's in an office environment, you have people, you know, you have staff segregation. Even in FIDA, it can happen in FIDA where you are divisive in selecting to work with some people and leaving the others out. Loss of high performing team members and ultimately failure to achieve the organizational goals. I remember in FIDA Abuja, there was a time we had this bad, what I can call bad leadership. Within three months, it was, there was kata kata everywhere. There was a lot of problem, a lot of problem. And that never subsided until the end of that particular channel. So we have to be very, very careful. If you're a bad leader, you can be sure that your members will abandon you. And if they don't abandon, they can stick with you and make sure that you don't succeed in anything you do. They can do that. So it's in your own interest, first and foremost, to try to acquire those skills that will make you a good and effective leader. And then, most importantly, in the interest of the organization, in the interest of FIDA that we have, we groom our leaders to be good leaders. So nobody knows it all. If you have not acquired any of these skills, please make effort to do that. Enterprises have leaders who are focused have vision and passion and the ability to plan and set goals. For FIDA to run successfully as an enterprise, the chairpersons of various branches and committee heads need to build themselves up into good and effective leaders. We've already said how this can be done. Nobody has it all, but you can always improve. You know? While few are born as natural leaders, others work hard to acquire the necessary qualities, attributes, and skill sets that will enable them to deliver as top-notch or top-class leaders so as to ensure growth, sustainability, and continuation of the FIDA brand. Thank you so much for the attention. I appreciate it. It's for you have done justice to this topic. We mm -hmm. are so, so very much grateful. We have learned a great deal. I'm sure our chairpersons were all you know, attentive and members as well. We have learned so much on the role of a leader. We have learned, you know, the qualities of a good and effective leader, the leadership styles. We have also learned the role of a leader and the responsibilities of a leader, particularly in FIDA. Chairpersons, I'm sure they will do better right now with what we have heard from you, Mama Ngosu. We're so grateful and we appreciate you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So during question and answer time, Mama will let you know which questions will direct to you, Ma. Please. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
Mayor, Dr. Mrs. Sorry about the sorry about the poor network. Um I'm still talking about red flags in organizational effectiveness. Tips for organizations equate effectiveness to good leadership. And we're here saying that a good leader provides direction. I'm happy that um, Mrs. Wosu has dealt with leadership issues, you know, effectively. You know, so it's actually going to help my own presentation. So I don't dwell so much. By way of continuation, a good leader provides direction, exhibits passion, confidence, commitment, courage, and inspiration, and all of that. And then, just like she said, leadership by example motivates and inspires others to follow through. A good leader propels the right strategies towards achieving effectiveness. Actually, the essence of this presentation is to show that leadership is the number one thing that is required for you to have an effective organization. That is the bottom line of this, my presentation. And then talking about a bad leader, a bad leader exhibits organizational dysfunction where no success is recorded. And it might be a case of a bad workmanship quarreling with her tools. Well, um, the next one is the indicators for effectiveness. And these are mainly contributors to overall effectiveness. And the first one there is management. That management is actually still talking about leadership and the team that are working as a workforce who engage others for the purpose of organizational climate. That's the way I would put it. Then the next one is performance and productivity efficiency. And we know that FIDA is not there to make profit. Rather, for performance is actually for FIDA to be able to you know, take care of the clients that come to them, one, for them to be able to carry out their activities efficiently. Take, for example, advocacy. Advocacy is not just about visits, but most of the time we, you know, look at it from the point of view of visiting this, visiting this. The important thing is that when we are doing advocacy, we need to follow up with, after the visit, we need to follow up with some information that will go out to the public that will change the perception of the public on certain issues. Then the another thing there is accountability. You can see that these things are intertwined. When you look at the um, leadership um, training that we have just done now, you see that everything is still interwoven somehow. So accountability here, who is responsible for what? What are the rules? What are the procedures? People should be acquitted with what, are, what the rules are, the procedures for doing things, the processes. And then we should be able to reward when people do good, we should reward them. And then when people go wrong, what do we do? We should discipline every member. Because I think part of the problem that FIDA it has is the fact that some of the time we don't even reward goodness. And at the same time, we don't discipline every member. Then the next thing there is strategy. Strategy is just talking about how do we remain relevant? How do we be, beat our competitors? How do we adapt to changing environment? How do we meet the demands of our clients? These are all the things that you know shows how strategic we are. After strategy, we after strategy, we now have results. What is the result like? The productivity, what is it? The tools and technology are what enhances our results. If we are not able to gather for our clients, that means we are not having good results. If we're not able to carry out our activities in such a way that our funders are satisfied, that means we're not getting the right results. If we're not able to you know, put through our objectives and goals, that means we're not having a good result. So then is an organization effective? And I was able to look at a few points. An organization is effective when it achieves its set goals, internal processes, and having secured resources that create competitive advantage. This is actually information. What is meant by a, an effective uh, uh, um, organization? Then effectiveness is a testimony of progress. Attaining greater highs, high rating from the public, is also for FIDA. Effectiveness means promoting and protecting the human rights of women and children through increased number of clients, increased funding, increased activities. And how do we even? How does 
Fidel's work affect the public. Those are such issues. Then I want to take, take you through Bracepan's elements of effective organization work, which will be illustrated in the next slide. Next slide. An adaptation of these Bracepan's key elements of effective organization work is as follows. When you look at this drawing, it's not a perfect drawing, but you can see that leadership is at the helm of affairs. In other words, it is actually the leadership that propels all the other components of this wheel. And in the center, you will see culture. In other words, culture is also, you know, affected by those around it. That is to say that leadership propels decision-making and structure, working or the members. Leadership also affects work processes and the systems. And all of them are dependent on the culture of the organization. That is a simple explanation of that will. And the nonprofit organization has a will, which is what we explained earlier. And the first one, their effectiveness means that the leadership is able to align all the functional areas. That means clear vision, their priorities, and there is a cohesive team. If there's no cohesion among the team, that means they're not really likely to achieve anything. Then the next thing is decision making and structure. Somebody must take responsibility for the decisions that are made. And then the next one is people and access to skills. In people's stroke skills, you now look at talent, which is necessary skills, then there won't be success. Then work processes and systems, execution of programmatic work processes in an ethical manner. That is where we're doing things for executing projects and programs in an ethical manner, which is very, very important. Then the last one is culture, just like the drawing had shown. Culture, values and behaviors, capacity to change. This has a linkage to all areas of organizational work. Then measuring success for nonprofits. You can see that achieving its mission, goals and objectives is effectiveness in nonprofit. This is one mission measured by profit amount, the work of the organization, that is the number of funders, number of volunteers, and more importantly, the reputation and integrity of the organization. This is the integrity affects the workability of all the other factors. If an organization does not have reputation and integrity, it's not likely that they're going to attract funding. It's not likely that they will have a lot of clients, you know, looking, looking up to them for assistance. Then, and the number of people who live, whose lives were touched through organizational activity. So this is the major cross of this presentation. We'll just simply identify some of the red flags. And then the red flags refer to signs that there is a potential threat, that things are not going the way they should. Things that are going wrong due to ineffective leadership. Here, the integrity of the leadership is called to question whenever you see red flags. And then an example of that is where poor funding has made it impossible to carry out activities or projects, where it has become difficult to get new members, or where it has become the order of the day that FIDA office does not have uh, clients that are looking for assistance. That show, that are, those are some of the red flags that shows that there's a problem somewhere. The inability to align team goals to organizational objectives. If a, a branch has their own agenda, which is different from the objectives of FIDA, that shows that there's a problem somewhere. Then self-centeredness. When a leader is more interested in outshining team members, you also know that there's a problem somewhere. Then red flags also is that lack of trust, no teamwork and effective communication, tension during meetings or programs. Instead of having meetings or having a peaceful program, people are busy quarreling, you know, calling names and all that. Then too much control and lack of empathy or compassion. That is power play. It's not good and that shows that there are red flags. Then lack of accountability, no responsibility for actions, no commitment, no proper records, poor reporting of activities. Those are the red flags that we can see in, in leadership. Then lack of transparency in transactions or projects. We have a situation where projects are undertaken and we don't have any financial report for them. 
no proper handover from one tenor to the other. These are some of the red flags that shows that there is a problem in leadership. Then we have vicious politics, muslinging each other, forming cliques, internal strife, sectionality, inability to work with some members. I mean, some people call it cliquism. That is not good. Uh, those are the red flags. Then pointing, accusing fingers when, they are, when things go wrong, instead of somebody taking responsibility for actions or inactions. Backbiting, bickering, enmity, lack of cohesion, extreme criticism instead of constructive criticism. These are signs of red flags. Then low morale, lack of passion and enthusiasm. Organization not meeting its major objectives and goals. These are the major red flags that I can identify here. Then let's, let's look at the tips on overcoming tips for overcoming red flags. And the first one I have there is performance reviews. This is very, very important. If we have feedbacks from members, we can actually have feedbacks from members to know how we are performing or whether we are performing or not. Then from clients, we can do that with our staff. We can do that anonymously so that people will actually come out true to tell you the truth about how you're performing, whether you're doing well or not. Then being ready to implement these reviews and not taking them personally. In some cases, some people do reviews and by the time people are expressing that they are talking to them personally. No, you have to, you have to learn how to not take them personally, but rather try to you know, effect some changes that people have suggested. The lead integrity and moral uprightness, be selfless and forget about personal gains. Rather, focus on organizational goals. This is very, very important because you feel that a lot of leadership without integrity and moral uprightness. Then we have to take responsibility for failure and do not shift blames. Then the next slide, tips on overcoming red flags also continues. Honesty and openness, you know, cures a lot of, you know, illness. Show respect and not bully. Show core ethical values. These are some of the qualities that we need in leadership that will help us to achieve our objectives. Create trust, show empathy, integrity, friendship, sisterhood. That is the most important thing about FIDA, sisterhood. Leadership is all about service. You are actually looking like the chief servant of the organization and not carrying yourself as if you are the one that is greater than everybody in the organization. Effective communication, internal and external as a strategy for flow of information. Then being receptive to contributions, suggestions, and feedbacks reads through loyalty. Then encourage appreciation, engage more, reward hard work, and punish members, especially for corruption, unjust enrichment and tyranny. It's, I think the problem is because nobody gets punished for you know, misconduct. That is why everything seems like anybody can do whatever he or she likes. Then FIDA Nigerian members and officers throughout the branches must be careful with public perception of what FIDA stands for. They must be seen as an exceptional professional organization with high ethical values and standards. Integrity, humility, diligence, accountability, transparency, conscientiousness, and ethical standards must be the watchwords. Bickering, gossiping, mudslinging, foul language, backbiting, who had Down syndrome, or healthy competition must be avoided like a plague. And in the end, I just say thank you for these organizers. God bless all members of FIDA in Nigeria. Long live FIDA branches in Nigeria. Long live FIDA Nigeria. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you so much for this privilege and the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mrs. Chico. That was very apt and so timely. In fact, this is a topic for all the branches to learn from and ensure we move forward you know, positively. You have highlighted the red flags, the red flags in leadership. And there are about, I don't know, about um, 10 of them. You have highlighted poor funding, lack of transparency, tension during meetings, too much control and power play, no communication among members. I hope our chairpersons are listening with our members from various branches. 
because these are the red flags we need to watch out and come out to ensure our branch our branches will be better for it. No proper records, no handing over, pointing accusing finger, but biting, bickering, and all the likes of them. You know, the organization not meeting its goal because in the long run, all these red flags will accumulate into the organization not meeting its goal. And FIDA is known for achieving its goals. Um, doctor also talked about tips about, you know, on overcoming such red flags. And that's a wonderful one we need to take home today. Um, we have performance review, leadership with integrity, moral uprightness, honesty and openness. We need to create trust. We have to show empathy. We need to e effectively communicate with our members. We have platforms to do this. There's the ESCO platform and the general platform. We can communicate effectively through this platform. We need to encourage hard work, integrity, and humility also has to be, you know, you know, the watchword as feeder members. And maybe we could come up with um, means with which we can punish or deter members who go on, on the wrong, on the negative. When something is done wrong and we put it in check, I'm sure all this will come to play. Okay. I would like to say a big thank you to Dr. Mrs. You have done justice to this topic and we're so glad. Thank you for reminding us on our roles and duties as FIDA members. We appreciate you dearly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we're going to have the question and answer session now. We have just about 20 minutes to do this. If you have any question, please, could you drop same in the chat room? You can drop it on the chat box so we can read, then direct the question to either the first or the second speaker, then we can take the answers wholesome. So let's keep it coming. Questions, please. To my mind, it was a wonderful presentation, a wonderful, well-dissected presentation. The first and second speakers have done justice. Any more questions? Yes. Okay, we have two minutes to go. If we don't have any further questions, so we can put across the question to the speakers in the house. Yes. Um, the only question we have, how can decisive leadership be caught? How can decisive leadership be caught? Dr. Mrs. Chigo, I don't know if you can take that. Hello. Hello, ma'am. The question. Yeah, okay. We have just one question. The question is how divisive leadership can be caught. Very well, ma'am. Yeah, so I, I think um, it's not a very difficult thing. It's just for the leader to bring everybody to the table. One, and you try. I mean, this thing is just about your willpower to make sure that you don't divide people across religion, across tribe, or anything like that, or across the people that are your friends and the people that are not your friends. If you're a leader, you must embrace everybody. There's nothing like you know these people are my friends together and give everybody the opportunity to express ourselves. I don't think you won't be divisive in this case. So it's also a question of, you know, that leader making up her mind that I don't want to divide this house. I want to incorporate everybody. And I, I want to make sure that I move everybody along whatever I'm doing and not divide people along any ethnic or whatever uh, divide. That's what I think in this particular case. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. I hope you heard me. I hope you heard me. Clearly, ma, we heard you clearly. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Can I ask about carrying out your duty properly as a leader? You are supposed to be a, a team builder, bringing people together for a particular purpose. You know, it's an opportunity that you have to be the one leading the theme. And you are not supposed to be the one causing the trouble. You are supposed to be the one building and not destroying because destruction has a lot of bad consequences. You won't be able to achieve your aim and you will have, you spend most of your time having problems instead of dealing with the particular issue that brought you together, achieving the purpose or the objective of the organization. So it's just about learning how to be a good leader, a good team builder, and doing what you're supposed to do instead of doing the opposite. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're so grateful. We really appreciate you for your time. You are actually our own and you have done us good. I'm sure the branches will be the better for it at the end of this training. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Mrs. Chigoziri Ajaka, thank you so much, Mama Roslyn of the Ageli Mwosu. We're so grateful. We appreciate you for your time. And um, we hope that when we will call you some other time, you'll be here to do justice to more topics. Thank you so much. We are grateful. Um, next in line, we have... Uh, you know, we have the floor for any of the national officers if you have any comment, observation, or something you want to share from your department. We have five minutes to do this, please. Any national officer? Any national officer on the floor of the house who would want to share a word or two with us at this August meeting? Okay, I don't get to see any. Um, hello, Christine. I'm here. Yes. My okay. city, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, very well. Yes, very well. Yeah. I'm also a national officer and I have a word <laughs> to share. All right. Um, before I proceed, <laughs> oh, I'd like very to... well, very well, ma'am. You will you wrap it up for us, ma'am. Okay. Uh, you wrap it up for us, my CVP, ma'am. Let, let, let me first of all thank um uh, Mrs. Ngosu and um, um, Mrs. Ojiaka very much for putting their thoughts, you know, to this uh, training. There are no better persons to hear from because uh, both of you have risen from branch levels to the national and also to the uh, um, international office. And so you know what practical, what is practicable. So you know what happens in the branch, you know what happens at the national. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to say is that even as a, um, as a leader, as a branch person, you must avail yourself to the criticisms of your mentors. As a branch chairperson or as a secretary, you must also have mentors. You must have people who can call you to order. You must have people that you defer to. You must have people that you constantly learn from. Otherwise, you would be that leader who is like, um, who is like um, the um, tipper that does not have brakes. There's nobody, there's nothing to stop you. You are just, um, you are just moving. Definitely such a leader, you know, is headed for destruction. So as leaders, and particularly in an organization like um, FIDA Nigeria, that is essentially a volunteer organization. You have chosen to come to FIDA. You have chosen to be a member of FIDA because FIDA gives you that platform that you, know, you can cater for the special needs of women and children. FIDA gives us that uh, a special platform that we bring those special skills you know, that is attentive to the special needs of women and children. Therefore, if we are not careful, it's either we make it or we, uh, or we rock, rock the boat. And it is unfair for us to, um, 
um, give up ourselves to the society, to portray ourselves as that organization that can always come to the aid of women and children, that can always be, to the, be the voice of the voiceless. And then we go back and we're doing contrary. I expected more questions. I ex expected more interrogations and practical examples drawing from our branches. In fact, some of those things that I put uh, in my remarks are feedbacks that we got from our branches. You know, the chairperson will have her own perspective. The secretary has her own perspective. The treasurer, the PR, everybody has their own perspectives and they bring their own, you know, special play to the table. So these are practical. This is supposed to be a practical question. You can cite the example. This is what happens in my branch. If it happens, uh, if this, uh, if X, Y, Z happens in my branch, how do I tackle it? Um, uh, I expect this, I, ex I expected that we will be more interactive. We have, you know, experienced uh, speakers, you know, that have firsthand uh, information. They have firsthand experience that we can throw any question as, at them and uh, we're sure that they can answer it. So please let us ask questions. Let us um, build our capacities. Let us acquire more skills, you know, even as we continue to train ourselves to be, you know, that organization that will be competitive and then that is geared toward more partnership and expanding, uh, expanding our front tiers. Thank you. Thank you, Christy, over to you. Thank you so much, my CVP. That was a very good charge. We'll still come back to you, ma'am. I can see my DCVP's hand up. My DCVP, you have the floor now. Mrs. Evelyn, you have the floor. Let's hear you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, our CVP. Uh, I wanted to say almost exactly what the CVP had said. So my madam has spoken. I don't have anything more to add. You know, I was I was concerned and uh, knowing all that we are facing in FIDA Nigeria, especially at our branch levels, and um, that we didn't have the kind of questions. The topics are mind-blowing. Uh resource persons did it so well. I've learned so much. So we were expecting to hear more questions and uh, for everybody to just be silent. Maybe we are swallowing it up or we're chewing on the beautiful meal we just had this afternoon and perhaps the questions will come maybe we can raise a poll or receive questions later and um, through a media but i think and um, because we don't have much time here i think we need to address issue because wow the, i i wasn't able to get in here to hear much of what um uh, auntie rose said but I listened to Doc and it was really something that we need to address. These red flags are issues that um, we need to address. So let me not talk much. CBP has said it and let's hope that we can now get uh, people charged up to now ask some very practical questions because that's what this training is about. Thank you. Thank you so much, DCVP. We appreciate you for that. Um, my CVP, I don't know if you have more charge for the branches. You actually have some time more. If you have any further charge for our branches of FIDA Nigeria. My CVP, you have the floor. Okay, I think we can um, also, um, other national officers are here. I know NS is here and other national officers, you know, say they can also share their thoughts um, with us on this platform. Thank you, ma'am. Any Thank other you. national officer who wants to share her thoughts? National officers, we have the floor. If you want to share your thoughts. Any other national officer? Okay, I can see Zainab Atopa's hand up. 
one time chairperson Feeder Nigeria Kaduna State Branch. You have two minutes. Zaina Batoba, you have two minutes to share your thoughts with us so we can wrap it up. Good, good afternoon, my CVP and members of our national ESCO and um, the two speakers. Good afternoon, Max. I'm sorry I was late for this meeting, so I didn't listen to the first speaker, but for the second speaker who spoke about the red flags, I was able to catch up with that. Mine is just to, um, I wouldn't, I thought, I didn't want to say anything, but when the CVP employed that we should say something, I became agitated to say my own experience and thereafter to urge us to try to do what you FIDA stands minutes. for. You have two yes, minutes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Um, the experience I had when I was chairperson wasn't very palatable dealing with some ESCO members who were against me just maybe one or two, I think just one person. And I know that my CVP is aware of our case and I keep wondering why people take up responsibility and they will never be there when um, they are called upon to discharge their duties. And like my CVP say, it's completely a job for free. For that job, we don't get paid for it. It's something that you must have a passion for it. So I just want to employ us, use this avenue to say that anybody that will come up to say, I want to take up a responsibility in FIDA should be a person that is passionate about giving back to society and be passionate about rendering humanitarian service and be sure that they don't want anything in addition to this. They must feel that in their heart and be ready to give it out. That's just what I have to add. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chair Emeritus. We are so grateful. Um, we're going to take finally now the vote of thanks. The vote of thanks is going, is going to be done by the Assistant National Secretary, Mrs. Beatrice Awa. Mrs. Beatrice, you have the floor now for the vote of thanks. Mrs. Beatrice, are you there? Are you there, Mrs. Beatrice? Okay. Yes, Maybe. I'm here, I'm here now. Very well, thank you. Good evening, members. Good evening. Thank you very much for this wonderful training we had. I want to sincerely apologize for the issues we've been having concerning uh, network issues. I apologize for that. And on behalf of FIDA Nigeria, I sincerely thank our resource persons, Mrs. Rose Nwosu and uh, Dr. Chigo Ojiako, for their very, very erudite and well articulated presentation. You have both taken us through what a good leader should be. We thank you sincerely. You have told us that the leader, leadership is a privilege and not a right that leaders are builders. We will not forget that. And I, our branch chairpersons who stepped down this training we've had today. For those of us who were able, opportune to listen to both of you, we are enriched by the knowledge. We thank you. I want to sincerely thank also our CVP, our DCVP and our uh, as National ESCO for putting this through. You have really assisted and given us wealth of knowledge that we cannot thank you enough. We say thank you. I thank you and we thank you, our resource person. Thank you very much. Christiana, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Assistant National Secretary 
We appreciate you. Um, my CVP, her team, all participants in the chat room, we appreciate you entirely for all that has been done today. We say keep, keep up with us until we come your way very soon again with another training. Remain blessed. Do have a lovely evening. Thank you.